Hey guys, it's Tom. Today's question, how fast can an individual get to learn more about NLP? Well, that's an easy one to answer. How fast can an individual get to learn more about NLP? Very fast. But when we refer to learning in NLP terms, it's probably different than what you normally associate with learning. So most people, when they think about learning, they're thinking about that you are able to conceptualize, that you have an understanding about how it is, you know, how it works. But in NLP, we're always interested in uh, behavioral terms, in terms of specific outputs as a consequence of somebody learning something. What we're saying in NLP is that learning equals behavioral change. If there isn't a behavioral change as a consequence of you having learned something, then you haven't yet learned it. You might be able to espouse and regurgitate ideas about it, but there's a difference between being able to regurgitate something and then as a consequence, being able to uh, adjust your behavior, to be able to do something different. So to re-answer the question, how fast can an individual get to learn more about NLP? Well, if you're talking about creating a behavioral change, it really depends on what kind of learning, what kind of change and behavioral change you're looking to create and how much practice are you willing to do in order to learn that uh, behavior. So for example, if you're looking to learn photography, there are a lot of things that you need to know about in order to be able to operate and use a camera well. Three of the basic things are got to do with uh, the amount of light that enters the camera lens and hits the actual uh, sensor on the camera. And in photography terms, we've got three main ways of adjusting the light that hits that sensor. We have the aperture, the size of the aperture, basically how big or how small the aperture is. The bigger the aperture, then the more light that enters. The smaller the aperture, the less light that enters. The shutter speed, how quickly the shutter opens or closes. And then the ISO. And the ISO has got to do with the signal that when the light's received on the sensor, how strong that signal is. And in effect, the higher the ISO, which is measured anything from for example, 50 or 100 ISO, all the way up to the many thousands, that when the light signal comes in, at a lower ISO setting, it's, it's quite small, but at higher ISO settings, it actually amplifies whatever the sensor received. And with that, you'll also get any noise. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, I've just given you three th ways in terms of from a photography point of view that you can uh, control the exposure and light entering into the camera. The cool thing is that if you understand those right now and you go, oh, I know what you mean, Tom, but you don't know what to do and you heard your behavior doesn't change as a consequence when you pick up a camera, then you haven't learned the behavior of how to be able to use the principles uh, and the mechanics that I've outlined there in terms of how to affect the amount of light entering a camera lens to be able to create a better photograph. So in terms of behavioral change, what you might do is that if you understand how those principles work and you're familiar with how to be able to manipulate those on your particular camera, then when you pick up a camera, for example, if it's a relatively low light condition, you know you've got three different ways that you can modify the amount of light entering the camera. The first you might go to do is to open up the lens, which specifically means actually, well, it means something different in photography, but for our terms, we're talking about increasing the diameter of the size of the lens so more light comes through. The other way you might look to do it is you might look to uh, slow down the shutter speed. So typically, uh, let's just say a normal shutter speed is 1 60th of a second. So within 1 60th of a second, it shuts uh, once the um, once the sensor is exposed, the aperture is open, the light's coming through, and the shutter quickly moves across for 1 60th of a second, and then it closes behind itself. In that context, you might slow it down to, for example, 1 second. So now, as opposed to it quickly shutting um, once it opens in a 60th of a second, it's actually open for an entire second, and then it closes. Of course, that introduces other problems, but the principle is that it will let more light in that low light circumstance hit the sensor. The third way, and the way that is often used, when, for example, you've opened up the aperture as wide as you can, that it's really big, and yet it's still too dark, and you've also uh, reduced the speed of the shutter. So let's say now you're at one second and the aperture size is really big, you then might increase the ISO. 
and the ISO remembers that amplification in terms of when the sensor, when it gets that signal of the light, how it can amplify that uh, in order to get a uh, more light in and to amplify the light that it's got. So now that you're aware of this, you're able to modify your camera and go, okay, I'm in the context, it's low light, this is what I want to do. Equally, since you understand that, when you're shooting in a very bright condition, you know, okay, there's not gonna to be too much light coming in. And so if you took those same settings of the aperture being really big, and the shutter speed being one second and the ISO say being something called 3200 ISO which you don't need to understand the technicalities but it just means that it's amplified quite a bit that in fact if you took that outdoors to a park and it was uh, midday sun if you took a photo it would be completely whitened out you know it would be basically be blinding uh, the sensor and it would just be a white color so the interesting thing is that in terms of behavior change and coming back to you know how fast can you uh, learn about NLP, it really comes down to getting the foundations strong and firm, understanding the core models of NLP and understanding the principles that drive uh, the models and also the specific techniques and then practicing it. The quicker you practice, the quicker you apply what you learn and the more you do it until it becomes automatic for you, uh, then the quicker you'll actually learn and have a behavioral change. Hope that was useful. And if you have any other questions, feel free to uh, sign up to our videos at YouTube or come and subscribe. Get our newsletter and all the great resources that I provide at www.mlptimes.com. Thanks for watching.